All right, so you're you're down there. You're going to see Messi in yet another exhibition. We just uh, you know saw the uh, the interesting um, preseason trip that they had here. But the the dude is a phenomenon, and and it's Messi, yep. one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Obviously, you have to sell him. But now this is the first season that we are going to see him with Miami mm. in a full season. How do you think the, for lack of a better phrase, the Messi experiment? functions in a 2024 context, especially after what happened uh, with him in a half year abbreviated type of situation last year. Buddy, we could do an entire podcast on this. I, I, I can't believe everyone and their mother has them as title contenders for four trophies. I don't see it. I don't. I look at MLS history and I look at the way this league is built on parody and I, I get it. Alba Busquets, Suarez, and Messi, I get it, but those are older players. There's not a ton of tread left on those tires. From what I've seen from Suarez, he's been offside 21 times in his first four games for Inter Miami. There's not a continuity in the final third, and everyone's going to come back at me, and a lot of people are saying, oh, no, they're going to set a record. They're going to win the supporter shield. Alexi, I think they're up against it. I think Farias's ACL injury is going to make it real difficult kermaski has got a sports hernia that he's going to have to deal with. The rumor is they're going to bring in Redondo. If they do that, they've got to get rid of two players already. So is that Taylor? Is it Kristoff? Is it Yedlin? Whoever it may be, because of the salary cap and the way they're trying to build this roster, Alexi, you're relying on four old players. And the X factor being the 37-year-old Luis Suarez, who from all accounts can't train four days in a row without having his knee balloon up. I get it. He had... 43 gold contributions in Brazil. I don't think the Brazilian Serie League is really good in defending. He's going to come to this league and he's going to come into this climate and the time zones and the travel. Alexi, I think they're up against it. I think they're lucky if they win one trophy. I really do. Woo, love it. Uh, Taylor, we just covered Conmebol's Olympic qualifying tournament. It was littered with MLS <laughs> players, which speaks to this emphasis now on signing younger Latin American players. Yes. But at the same time, Emil Forsberg looks like he could be a good signing for the Red Bulls. You've got Suarez in Miami. What do you make of this balancing act now that MLS teams do of mostly going young, but still being on the lookout for that right world-class veteran when he becomes available? Yeah, I think the MLS has improved on it. I think both of you would agree. I think there was a time when any veteran that wanted to come over, you signed him. And I think that kind of bit them a little bit. I, I, I go back to Pirlo, Lampard, and that New York City, Steven Gerrard. Those didn't really pan out. And that was the transition period where the league said, you know what, we need to get younger. I watched a lot of those qualifiers. I love seeing the young, hungry player that wants to use Major League Soccer as a stepping stone to get to Europe. You saw what Tiago Almada did. You see what Gomez has done, and he's going to be a big player for inner Miami. I like seeing that. I think the balance has to be more younger than older in saying that though, when Suarez says he wants to come, when Messi says he wants to come, when Busquets, these are generational type players that can still contribute on some level. I just think the bigger debate is you put four on one team does it really work? I think Forsberg's going to be a home run in the Red Bulls. They've got to supply him with more players around him. That's not his issue. That's a Red Bull issue. But I like the balance, and I still think it needs to go a little bit more younger because I'd rather come on this podcast and talk with you guys about the transfer window coming around, and every single time there are six to ten players in MLS being scouted by teams around the world because that means now you're in the conversation of the world market. And I think that's bigger growth than Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard coming over for their swan song. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.